Welcome to another video of the Lightweight M2M Academy. In this video, I'm going to explain you the process of over-the-air firmware updates, meaning that we can update the firmware of an embedded IoT device through an over-the-air process. So my name is Lawrence, and I'm going to explain you how this process works, and I'm going to give you a live demo using the Nordic semiconductors. Uh, thingy 91 dev kit which has the nrf 9160 module embedded key to the success of a photo update is that you need to understand how flash works so flash is non-volatile memory that lives on the iot device and usually flash memory is divided into multiple sections or what we call multiple partitions in let's say the main partition lives the main application firmware so in this example we call it I don't know, firmware version 1.2 and then you have a second partition and that's reserved for updates or like new firmware um, so if there's a new firmware update then this other partition is used to basically store the new firmware image and there are two other uh, like uh, partitions that i will uh, cover in a second so once a new firmware is available, then I don't know, the server informs the device that a new firmware image is available and the device starts downloading the firmware image. So in partition one, at some point, it started downloading the firmware and then contains version 1.3. So once the download has been completed, the bootloader is being activated. And the bootloader sees that there is a new firmware image available in this specific update partition. And the bootloader then validates authenticity and integrity of that new firmware image. And once that has been uh, validated, it initializes a reboot. And after the reboot, the firmware is being swapped. And it depends a bit on the bootloader you're using. But for the example, today we're using the bootloader called MCU boot to swap those two images. And how it works in practice is that um, partition zero is being written to the scratch partition. Um, partition one is being written to partition zero. And then eventually the scratch partition is being written to partition one. That basically means that the two partitions are being swapped. And then after a reboot, the bootloader starts initiating the new firmware, version 1.3. And if everything went well, then the device then automatically starts running the new firmware after this successful reboot. But in case some error is being, um, is being found or some issues are being uncovered, then the device can initiate a rollback. And it basically means that it redoes the swap um, um, procedure. And again, those two partitions are being swapped. So eventually we return to the initial state and version 1.2 um, is being rewritten to partition zero and after a reboot that initial firmware image is being um, used again. So this is in a nutshell what happens inside the flash memory of the device. And you must be wondering, okay, so how does this work in practice? So I'm going to give you a demo and explain you how this works in a bit. But first, this. The firmware update process is defined in object with identifier 5. And identifier 5, they, they have a resource which is called update state. And the update state stores the device's update process. So before and after the update, it contains or the device is in idle mode. And then at some point, it's gets the server command that a new, new firmware version is available and it starts downloading the firmware, which is state one. At some point it finished downloading the firmware and validates the authenticity and, and integrity, which is done in state two. And in state three, it conducts the update process where it starts swapping the flash partitions. And if everything is then completed, it state goes back to idle, which is state zero. And next to the update states are also update results. And the update results contain the most common outcomes from an update. 
And obviously you want to end up with state one, meaning that the firmware has been successfully updated. But there are also numerous reasons why the update could fail, like insufficient flash memory, connection loss, the integrity check failed, or there's a invalid URI or an unsupported package type. So you can get some information from the server by looking at object ID five, and that provides you the information about why an update was unsuccessful. So enough talking, let's try to conduct a real firmware update. So for this, we are going to the Coyote IoT dashboard. And this is the overview of the Thingy91 dev kit that I connected. So you can see that the device is registered, that it has decent battery. Um, it's seen a couple of seconds ago. If we go to the data model, then you can find all the functionalities of the device. And here you can see the ID5 firmware updates. So we, if we open it up, then we can find some information, including the state. And the state is now defined as zero, which is called idle, which is before downloading, after successfully updating. So the update result now contains a one because I did some tests before making this recording, but usually this would contain the um, state zero, which is the initial value. So I prepared a firmware package that adds device functionality to this development kit. And as a result of a firmware update, I want the device to have additional functionality, which in this case, I want to add the accelerometer object to this device to retrieve X, Y, and Z values. So for doing so, I click the um, firmware update tab and I start selecting the um, new firmware image. So let me browse something and I actually did prepare something in advance. Um, so I go to the Zephyr folder and I select the app underscore update binary. So I can give it a name like adding accelerometer objects and I click save. So there are two ways on how to deliver the new firmware package. So you can either choose the pull method or the push method. So in this example, I'm going to use the pull method. And that means that I am sending the link to the device that the device can use to download the firmware image. Alternatively, I can do a push and that directly pushes the new firmware from the server onto the device. And depending on your device firmware, you can select one um, image transport type and the default version of this specific software that it runs on uses plain co-op. So I click the button next and schedule update. So you can directly see that the update is in progress and that it started running through those four um, steps, starting with preparing the updates, initializing, setting the observations. And throughout the process, you can clearly see the state of this update. So what I can do is I can um, connect. I have the device now connected directly to my laptop. Um, so I can connect to it over serial and this allows us to see the status of the update process. So here you can see that it started downloading and it's in total about 330 kilobytes in size. And as I explained to you before, we can also go to the data model and open up this firmware object ID5. And if we refresh here, then we can see that there's actually the package URI, which contains the link that the device uses to download the package. And it's currently in state one. And if we open this up, then we can see that state number one means that it downloaded, that it's in the process of downloading the new firmware. 
So let's head back to the firmware updates. And here we can see that it's waiting for the download to complete. And here it's nearing the end, almost being fully downloaded. So we're slowly going towards the end. Download complete. So the upgrade is scheduled. Um, the download is finished and it now starts the a reboot. You can see some errors here, but as far as I know, this basically means that because of the update, the device is not connected anymore to the server. So it gives an, uh, uh, an error. And hopefully in a few seconds, we can see that the device goes back online and starts running the new firmware. And here we can already see that the accelerometer is being calibrated. Um, the image is marked as OK, so the, the authenticity and the integrity is validated and the firmware update is, has conducted successfully. Well, it's connected to the server, so basically it seems like the update process has been conducted successfully, as you can also see here. And now let's um, see if we actually um, have this new functionality of this device being enabled. So we go to the data model and we click refresh and there we can see a new object, which is the accelerometer, which wasn't there before. So if we open this up, then we can see the X, Y and Z values that the device is transmitting. So it seems that we've conducted the full firmware update where, an, where new functionality is being added to the device as a result of an over-the-air firmware update. Uh, it, it went through those four stages and to end up, let's open up the firmware update process. And here we can see that the state returned to zero, which is either before or after a firmware update and the update result turned to one, meaning that the firmware update has been successfully conducted. So thank you so much for watching. There was a quick demonstration on how to update the firmware of your device and I warmly invite you to try it out yourself.